Kanai Das. Yeah. Join. Krishna. <laughs> Oh, Kana. Kanai means belongs to Kana. Uh -huh. And Kana is a very, very intimate name of Krishna. Uh, you can look it up in the books. Sure. Yeah, Kanai Das. Later on we'll have a ceremony. Jai. Jai. <laughs> That's <laughs> better. <laughs> now you're Krishna's servant. In his past times with the Gopis. How is it written? K long A N A I dot. So they were writing it here with the H. No. K long A N A I. And I think the second A may also be long. I have to look it up. That's your diacritics. Um, hit a semicolon before the letter. So, um, question, back to the question. So if you're thinking of Kanar as, or Kanai Das as Kanar, huh? you're thinking of his body and you're seeing him as a material being. But that's not really him. Huh? So <laughs> we have to be astute enough to understand the consciousness of another living entity by the symptoms that they display with their body until we get to the point where we can perceive consciousness directly. Huh? And we, we get that perception by Krishna's grace. There's no mechanical process to achieve it. Press here and then... <laughs> <laughs> Pull on the right earlobe? No. There's no mechanical process. No, there's um, a yoga process uh, like pranayama that settles the mind and stills the attention. Uh, but the, the result of that process is automatically achieved by chanting Hare Krishna and contemplating the beauty and wonderful qualities of Krishna because the mind is automatically attracted by those things. So similarly, by contemplating the spiritual qualities of the devotees, then we can begin to understand their consciousness uh, and approach them as, as on the level of consciousness. Uh, I mean, we can use these bodies as communication vehicles and, and stuff like that. But ultimately, our relationships, even with other people, are on the level of pure consciousness what to speak of our relationship with Krishna. So, um, the answer is, as long as you're thinking of Kanor as you know, that body, then you're relating on the material platform. But when you start to think, oh, this is Kanai Das, huh? and he has this certain kind of relationship with Krishna, and so you start relating to him on that level, huh? then that's a spiritual relationship. And of course, this spiritual relationship starts from a symbolic platform because we see the body. And also, we, you know, we have names and stuff like that, and those are just symbols. But they also mean something. And when we try to, when we actually perceive the actual meaning of those symbols, then we're in spiritual consciousness. Just like we talk about, you know, Krishna this, Krishna that, Krishna is like this, Krishna did that, you know, he had so many pastimes, so many qualities, blah, blah, blah. Then we're talking about Krishna. But when we come face to face with Krishna, that's the real thing. See, that's self-realization. And until we attain that, we can't claim to be guru or fully self-realized or any of that. But does that answer your question? Sort of. Sort of. Like, is it possible to be directly conscious of another person's consciousness? Oh, of course. Yeah. The first person we have to become directly conscious of is Krishna. Because we have a direct link with him. And then through Krishna, we can become linked with others also. 
but I mean, just exploring Krishna's personality is, uh, you know, that could take a few million years. <laughs> Krishna's personality is wonderful. Question from Luciano. Ah. Is meditation the best form to direct the conscious to itself? Well, chanting is a meditation. While we're chanting, we can contemplate so many things. Chanting is the best meditation because it puts us on that channel, connects us with Krishna, and then we can get revelations and teachings from Krishna directly through that channel. So if we, uh, while we're doing our chanting, we start to contemplate on questions like this. What is the soul? What is consciousness? And then how can I be directly aware of consciousness? Krishna likes these kind of subjects and he'll respond. Uh, so if you contemplate while you're chanting on these different questions, Krishna will respond very quickly because he wants to encourage us. He wants to help us attain self-realization. See, one of the things we're trying to do, we're trying to provoke Krishna into revealing himself. What attracts Krishna? That's why Prabhupada always said, don't try to see Krishna, but act in such a way that Krishna will want to see you. Uh, what attracts Krishna? What interests Krishna? What does Krishna want to see? What fascinates him? What makes him irresistibly curious about somebody? Uh, so that he has to come and see uh, directly. See? We have to get to know Krishna well enough that we can attract him, huh? interest him, fascinate him. That's the trick. And once we do that, then it's very easy because Krishna will come and see us. We can't go and see Krishna. We don't have the power. We don't have the power to walk through that wall, that door, huh? that, the uh, boundary of our individuality. But Krishna can come the other way. We have to attract him to come and see us. Don't try to see Krishna. Act in such a way that Krishna will come to see you. That's the trick. And that's what Prabhupada was doing uh, by creating all of this big noise of devotional service, lots of temples, lots of chanting, everything like that. Krishna was very curious. What's going on here? Uh, he has to come and see. So he appeared. Radha, Radha and Krishna appeared in so many places around the world just by Srila Prabhupada's influence. So just see what a great devotee. Huh? Like that. So, any other question? Yeah, there's... Ah. A little technical. From Bruce. According to the Srimad Bhagavatam, Narada is the son of Brahmaji. But Manus are also sons of Brahma. And yet, Narada was born into a common family and had to learn devotion before he became great. Therefore, is Narada Muni greater than Brahmaji because he isn't limited in movement and Brahma is? Oh boy. <laughs> no, they're all de pure devotees of the Lord. Huh? In fact, some of the Manus are, are actually incarnations of the Lord. And so is Brahma. Brahma is also considered a Shaktavesh avatar. Uh, Shakti Avesh means that Krishna has given some por portion of his power to an ordinary living entity. Can you light some incense, please? Uh, I need to clean that cat box out. It's really getting nasty. Yeah, Krishna has given some portion of his power to some living entity to perform a specific service. So when Narada was born in an ordinary family, that was in the previous creation. Uh, before this universe was created, in the previous creation, uh, Narada went through all the stages of self-realization. And then in this creation, he was born as the mental son of... Uh, Brahmaji. But actually Narada is considered a Shaktyavesh avatar uh, because his uh, service is to travel 
everywhere, far and wide, and to disseminate the messages of Krishna. Uh, the, uh, he, he likes to, actually, he, he likes to create drama. This is one of his best services for Krishna. Narada likes, for example, Narada went to Kangsa. Uh, Kangsa is always the enemy of Krishna. But Narada went to him and said, you know, actually, Krishna is growing up there in Vrindavan. He gave away the secret. And then Kangsa sent so many of his demoniac friends to attack Krishna. Well, why did Narada tell him that? Huh? It was simply to speed up Krishna's pastimes. Krishna, I mean, Narada wanted to see Krishna perform so many wonderful activities. And so 